Hi guys. Well, it is actually a fairly pleasant, soon to be pleasantly raining day here in the officially now drought-plagued upstate New York here on, uh, where are we? Sunday, October 11th. 2020. Uh, oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is the my little trail pal Sancho Panza, and we need to start getting our uh, our little camper ready for our move to Florida to snowbird it down to Florida in two weeks. But before I head out there to get involved in that, just doing what we do every day. Uh, here on Collapse Chronicles, and uh, that is chronicling the collapse of the planet. And I'm just going through my emails and uh, my and the mainstream media. We're just going to touch on a few. I think if, if I had to find a headline that uh, that chronicles the collapse of a planet as well as any headline I have read in, in 2020. This sums it up. Uh, the state of this planet from good old Business Insider. Let Business Insider explain to you where we have come as a planet. <clears throat> Bleak photo of a herd of elephants eating garbage on a giant dump tells the story of our times. That is exactly what it does. This, this is where we have come as humans obliterating our fellow earthlings off the face of a planet. A bleak photo of a herd of elephants eating garbage on a giant dump. It's, 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 it's all there in that headline. So, uh, what's this about? This bleak photo. I would show it to you, but it wouldn't show up. You can find it all over the mainstream media, I'm quite sure. A photo taken by a Sri Lankan photographer of elephants scavenging in a huge garbage dump has scooped the top prize at the UK's Royal Society of Biology's photography competition. I wish I could begin to pronounce this photographer's name, Tilaxon Thermapalon. Yes. <clears throat> Elephants have been known to fall ill and die from rummaging and eating plastics and other waste. Yes, do you think so? Uh, a record number of elephants died in Sri Lanka last year, according to the BBC. The majority of those 361 deaths were caused by people. Hmm. The majority of the elephant deaths were caused by people despite it being illegal to kill elephants in a country where it carries the death penalty to kill an elephant. The population of wild elephants in Sri Lanka has now fallen below 7,500 as the population has fallen by almost 65% since the year 2000. The primary threat is the loss of forest uh, as they are increasingly being cleared away to make room for humans. All right, now uh, a couple of my alert uh, readers have sent me this brand new article out of Live Science. What is the first species humans drove to extinction? The dodo bird? 
the woolly mammoth? Think again. And uh, guys, this is uh, just the latest uh, research on uh, the overkill uh, uh, hypothesis. You know, guys, how anyone can argue uh, the, the reason for all of these megafaunal extinctions, how many, uh, I, I'm not going to sit here and read this entire article. Uh, it, it's just the latest article uh, talking about why do you think uh, the, these large species of mammals have gone extinct all over this planet, mammals and big birds like the dodo bird, uh, over the last hundred thousand years or so. Wow. Uh, let's just read the guts of this article here in uh, the middle. They start off by explaining that the dodo bird uh, by the time the dodo bird uh, was obliterated off the face of this planet about 400 years ago, it's amazing there were any large uh, animals still left. So let's get to the meat of the matter here. <clears throat> Humans on the move. We have grown accustomed to thinking about human-driven species extinction as a relatively recent trend in our history. Yet, researchers have found convincing paleontological evidence that dismantles that idea. Okay, and this is some um, paleobiologist Dr. Hume. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm starting down in the middle of this. I don't know. It would take me too long to find out exactly who this guy Hume is. I love that his name is Hume, talking about humans. All right, anyway, whoever Dr. Hume is, quote, the real problem the real problem started when we, humans, started migrating. Yes, that starting point is still debated, but most recent estimates suggest <clears throat> that human migrations uh, that led to lasting populations of humans spread across the globe began with the movement of hominids uh, including Neanderthals and, and other ancient humans as well as Homo sapiens out of Africa and Southeast Asia roughly 125,000 years ago. This is where the evidence gets interesting. As humans left their ancestral homes and over the following tens of thousands of years went on to colonize Eurasia, Oceania, North and South America. The fossil record shows a parallel uptick in the extinction of large-bodied animals across all of those continents. Uh, this is Felisa Smith a professor of ecology and evolutionary biology at the University of uh, Mega, at University of New Mexico, quote: "As humans migrated out of Africa, you see this incredibly regular pattern of extinction." Wow, do you think so, Felicia? As she and her colleagues explained uh, in a study published in the journal Science, each time our ancestors set foot in new places, fossil records show that the large-bodied species, yes, 
the humongous prehistoric relatives of elephants, bears, antelope, and other creatures started going extinct within a few hundred to a thousand years at most. Such rapid extinction timescales do not occur at any other point in the last several million years since the dinosaurs were wiped out by an asteroid 65 million years ago, quoting Professor Smith, the only time you see it is when humans are involved, which is really striking. Yes, some of those early lost species would seem like fantastic beasts if they roamed the earth today and then they just go down the laundry list of, uh, of, all of, uh, uh, of all of the hundreds, the thousands, the t entire genre uh, of species that ancient humans uh, had already obliterated off the face of this planet, you know, thousands of years before uh, the dodo bird w was uh, wiped out. Um, so, what made large animals in particular so susceptible to humanity's spread? How about this one? Megafauna likely represented food or a threat to incoming humans. What's more, animals that had never encountered humans before were probably unwary of these strange newcomers migrating into their unspoiled lands, which might have increased their vulnerability to attack, and then of course, unlike smaller animals that breed more rapidly, megafauna reproduce more slowly and so have sm smaller populations compared with other species. Uh, and then of course, it was not just hunting that posed a threat, but also the spread of human-caused fires that destroyed swaths of habitat. And don't forget, increasing competition from humans for food. And this goes on and on. Uh, so, what is the bottom line? <clears throat> All of this, all of this research is to say that humans, humans have systematically wiped out the species around us from almost the beginning of our history. Our migration prompted, quote, a m m disaster across the world said Hume, we were not very pleasant. We were not very pleasant. Unfortunately, we, meaning here in the 21st century, have con continued our <clears throat> ancestors' legacy with among thousands of other species how about the eradication of Madagascar's hippos a thousand years ago, the loss of giant moa birds in New Zealand 600 years ago, and don't forget the decimation of the passenger pigeon 106 years ago. And we are also responsible for ongoing extinctions today. Do you think so? But I like the link in here to uh, the much more important question
they link you over to the most important question of all, what could drive humans to extinction? This came out in Live Science in late July of this year. Uh, <clears throat> and it just went right below my radar, better late than never. What could drive humans to extinction? How about we humans might, might play a role in our own extinction? <clears throat> yes. So anyway, guys, I'm going, so of course they go through, you know, nuclear war, pandemics, uh, climate change, AI, ending up uh, with humanity itself. However wide-ranging these existential risks are, they all have one thing in common humans, humans play a key role in determining the severity of all these other risks. So what if humans are their own biggest extinction risk? That is exactly what humans are. Uh, we are not going to stop with the obliteration of every one of our fellow earthlings. It is humans who are going to uh, bring on the extinction of the human race. We are going to make this a, a human-free, this planet, a human-free exclusion zone a human exclusion planet, the question, the only question remaining for the balance of the 21st century, how many of our fellow earthlings are going to uh, survive this. But, uh, you know, I'm going to come back and, and just do a separate uh, rant on what could drive humans to extinction, although I've, I've given away the spoiler, humans could drive humans, humans will drive humans to extinction. Uh, but anyway, we're going to wrap up uh, this story, the sixth biggest story on the mainstream media on the planet today, I, the island brokers are overwhelmed from the New York Times. Now, of course, this has a corona panic slant. This is how rich people uh, are responding to the corona panic, but of course, what this is is a peek in, in, into the rest of the 21st century that the corona panic is, is, is a tiny little uh, glimpse of, of how rich people are going to respond to this. <clears throat> Calls and emails come in at all times of day and night. This is from the New York Times. They are, they no longer concern fun or prestige Instead, the calls focus on fresh water and solar panels. These were not the inquiries they had grown used to. The island brokers are overwhelmed. Yes. Uh, the corona panic has upended nearly every aspect of life for everyone, including for those most insulated by money. Even the niche, ultra-rich world of island commerce has been turned on its head. Yes. This has been the busiest two months I have had in 22 years of selling islands said uh, Chris Crowell, chief executive of Private Islands uh, Incorporated. Uh, before the corona panic, 
an island was typically a vanity purchase that a wealthy client, usually male, would pursue sometime after retirement, brokers said. Yes, uh, the island bug would usually strike a few years after the novel of other luxury purchases had warned them. This is John Christie, president of Christie's International Real Estate. Quote, you have your yacht, your jet, and now you want your island. The island brokers knew how to cater to those clients. Yes, they sought a place to feel like a boss from sea to sea, a little kingdom with no authority except their own. But this new wave of island buyers is less driven by ego than a desire to escape. And brokers, like their clients, are newer to pondering survival. So, after a few harried months, brokers are struggling to meet their clients' new request, like having agriculture to go with their helicopter landing pad. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, how about renting a private island for $250,000 a week? But renting an island is not enough for some wealthy people. The pandemic has fundamentally changed the way they are thinking long-term about being around other humans. Yes, this is Marcus Gondolo Gordon from Incognito Property. Yes, before an island was a toy, now clients describe dreams of a bloody long boat ride to ensure that no one will cruise up and infringe on their isolation. They also want access to fresh water, solar panels, and a house that is ready to sleep in tomorrow. Yes, but it's not quite easy to find an island uh, anywhere on this planet safe from Mad Max. Yes. Quote, this guy, uh, we just, Gildodo Gabon or whatever his name is, you're going to have to read the news, he tells his clients, and you'll also have to consider that your shoreline your shoreline, not to mention your living room, will most likely be affected by climate change. You know, if the hurricane, you know, if the pirates don't get you first, then the hurricane doesn't blow you off the island. Your island is going underwater. When they cannot handle this news, the island broker advises his clients to rent a super yacht. <laughs> if you cannot handle the news that your private island is going underwater, my advice to the billionaires, rent a super yacht. Anyway, I'm going to come back with the, uh, with the most important and the most hopeful question on the planet. What will drive humans to extinction? So you have one more rant to sit through. You, I know you think we're done with it, but we got to come back looking at the big question of the 21st century. What could or will drive humans to extinction this century.
coming up in one minute. Bye, guys. No, we've got one more to do here.